Hey, it's Gordon again. How are you doing? Um, I'm here today to talk about the Bible, my favourite subject. Not because I like the Bible, my favourite subject because I like to talk about how stupid it is. Okay, I like to talk about um, the reality of the Bible, not the programming that we all seem to have had, lots and lots of people have had about the Bible, where they seem to accept everything that the Bible says as though it was the Word of God. And when uh, somebody says to them, well, actually, the Bible contradicts itself, it's almost like giving them an electric shock. It's like they say, how dare you say that? Well, I'm here to tell you that I looked at the Bible. I started thinking of the Bible. Imagine I, I was somebody who had just come to this earth who knew nothing about anything. And I started to read the Bible. The worst place to start reading the Bible is at the beginning because it's just a series of horrific stories. Um, but let me start. Anyway, what, what am I talking about? Well, the Bible starts right at the very beginning when God decided to create the earth. Okay. Uh, oh, by the way, I'm going to make this video in about two or three. I'm going to keep it to ten minutes because it seems to put people off when they see like, 20 minutes videos um, but I've got a lot to say God decided to make the earth now look for those who know the story afterwards can we consider for a moment his motivations why was it that he wanted to make the earth if you look at the way that everything sort of panned out and what God wanted from the people that he created basically he wanted them to worship him okay God created the earth because I don't know he maybe he was on his own he um, you know he didn't know how wonderful he was you know he probably, he probably looked in the mirror every day going hey looking good looking good but he had nobody there to sort of you know we've all had we've all got mothers who go oh you're wonderful they tell us we're wonderful and we're not but the mother's job is to say, "Oh, you're wonderful! Look how straight your legs are. Look how, look, look how, aren't you? Oh, you're a big lad, aren't you? You're, ooh, you're lovely, strong. Okay, you're fat." Um, so God didn't have that, or maybe he did, but he, it seemed that he didn't. Didn't have a mum, because he was there from the very beginning, and before God there was nothing. So the question is, where did he come from? But he, that's another question. Okay, so he created man because he wanted mankind to worship him. And I want you to follow this theme along. He wanted mankind to worship him and give him unconditional love. Okay? Just because of the fact that he was so goddamn wonderful. All right? However, there was a clause in this, and it's a weird clause, and it's it's not godlike in my book, whatever godlike is. But for me, God... Godlike is, is kind of something that you would look up to, is it not? You know, we all would like to, to be gods. Some of us want to be Greek gods, and all that we can manage is to be Greek urns. Um, so godlike is something that we would respect, revere, and love. Jesus said God is love. You know, and that's what Jesus' message was all about. God's love, God's wonderful, God's basically not the God of the Old Testament, which I'll explain. Um, so, God said, I want you to worship me, but I don't want you to worship me because I'm God or because I tell you to. That's probably more the point. I don't want you to worship me because I tell you to. I want you to worship me because I deserve it. I want unconditional love from you but if you don't I'm gonna kill you okay but I don't want you to love me just because there's a chance I could kill you because if you love me just because I can kill you that doesn't count that's conditional and I'll kill you anyway okay so you follow my my line of logic there isn't one okay God wanted mankind to love him for what he was but it was punishable by death if they didn't. But he didn't want them to love him just because he was going to kill them if they didn't. But he was going to kill them if they didn't. 
but they weren't allowed to live in through fear. Okay, anyway, you get my point. So, he created one person, okay? He created Adam. Now, God. If the Bible's to be believed, God is, let me tell you, God is omnipresent, right? That means he can give you a present anywhere. He can give you, wherever you are, you can have a present from God or worse. Okay? He's everywhere. He's also omnipotent. Alright? That means all-powerful. And that means if he give you a nip, whew, you're so powerful he could probably kill you, and he probably would. Okay? Omnipotent. And he's omniscient. Okay? Now, what all that means is he knows everything. Okay? He knows the lot. If you went to God and you said to him, um, Oh, God, uh, did you hear about the, the two nuts that went into a bar? God would say, yeah, one was assaulted. I, I know that joke. I know it. You don't, there's no point in telling me anything because I know it. You go, ah, yeah, but I know what you're going to say. Don't bother. I know everything. You see, he's omniscient. He knows the lot. He knows a lot. Not just now, the past and the future. Now it's also something to bear in mind. God knows everything. All right, the Bible's filled with future predictions. God's saying, this is going to happen, that's going to happen. He, he, he knows the future, supposedly. All-powerful. All-seeing. All-knowing. Okay, so if he is all-powerful, all-seeing, all-knowing, why the hell didn't he see that his creation was going to go tits up before the first generation had even kind of got themselves established? He only created two people and the whole thing went arse over tit. That's a, that's a technical expression. It was a mess. Everything went arse over tit. And he'd only created two people. The second person, let me add, Eve, was just an afterthought. Wasn't in the original plan. If you remember, Adam said uh, he got created and his job was to go around and he, uh, what he noticed was all the animals being fruitful and filling the earth and that meant that they all had a partner I don't even know if he had tackle then I don't even know if God had given him anything down there he might have been looking and thinking what the look at that look at that rabbit 50,000 times a day and, and I don't know if you've seen rabbits make love but actually the, the faint when they have an orgasm and you must be thinking what the hell and, and what, what I haven't even got anything I'm kind of like a neuter. So he complained bitterly to God. He was complaining, hey, all the animals, yeah, me, I'm alone, I'm lonely, I'm lonely, I'm lonely, hey, come on. Anyway, God in finally got so angry that he knocked him out uh, and, and uh, whipped a rib out, created Eve. So Eve wasn't even in the original plan, okay? But there she was. There they both were. And... Right, so God, all-seeing, all-knowing, everything. But first of all, let's go back. Let's go back. Imagine this scenario. I, I contract a carpenter, to cut, like Jesus, uh, to come into my house and build some wardrobes, some fitted wardrobes. I've, I, imagine, I've always wanted fitted wardrobes. I actually have always wanted fitted wardrobes. So imagine a pay carpenter to come in and he builds fitted wardrobes. And during the whole few days that he's there, he keeps coming downstairs and saying to me, oh, it's looking good. You know, it's good. It is good. Now, you know, I'd be thinking, I think I'll be the judge of that, not you. Um, and then imagine he finishes a pay him, and the look on the surface, it looks good. Yeah, I think, well, all right then. And then two days later, the whole wardrobe falls to pieces. Okay? What would I do? What would anybody do? Well, naturally, you would get on the phone to the carpenter and say, Excuse me, Mr. Carpenter, but you work shite. It's all fallen to pieces. Okay? It's imploded. It's fallen in on itself. And the carpenter, if he was worth his salt, because a bad workman blames his tools, does he not? The carpenter would say, hey, I'm really sorry. I'll come round and sort that out because I built it. Therefore, 
it's my responsibility. Is that what God did? Because after all, he did build it, didn't he? And then after a very short, I mean an embarrassingly short space of time, it all went peak Tom. Did God accept the responsibility? No, he didn't. We'll come to that in a moment. So, all seeing, all knowing. Well, I'll tell you what, we've reached 10 minutes. I'm going to move on to the next video, okay? So I'll see you there where you're going to hear about how God dealt with his collapsed wardrobe and also just about how seeing, how knowing and how um, powerful he is. Or oh, powerful? I think we can't deny that. But all seeing, all knowing? Mm, I've got my doubts. See you in the next one.